44, my folks moved to Solon. I was eight years old. And in those days, Solon looked exactly like Rome Township does today. As I grew up, I was always interested in farming. Not that I wanted to be a farmer, but I always liked working on a farm. So I worked for different farmers in the area. And with that, when Solon grew into the metropolis that it is now, we decided to leave Solon and look for property. And we found this. We sold everything we owned in Solon and decided this was the place we wanted to live. And since then, we've just been very diligent on maintaining the property and being involved with Rome Township and uh, pretty much brought us to a life that we thoroughly enjoy. In 1999, I decided to build the cupola because Alice Manpaw had showed me pictures of the farm with a cupola on it, with her grandfather's name. And he built this barn in 1899 because the first one burned down. So I told Alice, I'm going to build a cupola. And I was glad she gave me pictures of it because I was able to copy the exact old cupola. And we decided we wanted to put it up in 1999, the 100-year anniversary of the barn. On December 4th, someone up there was looking after us. It was like the 4th of July. The weather was beautiful, the roof was dry, there was no snow on the ground, and we swung that cupola up on December 4th, 1999. And that just, uh, that's what we do here. We're just we just keep on working to maintain this property and make the future owners of it very proud that they were able to buy it. Underneath the ramp, the earthen ramp going up to the big doors on the barn that they pulled their hay wagons in, there's a there's a room underneath there. It's about 10 foot by 10 foot, about six foot, six inches tall, with a door coming into the barn. Well, when we bought the farm, we didn't even know that room existed because there was cabinets in front of it. So then, one day I was getting rid of the old cabinets and discovered the room. And it was probably a root cellar. But when I talked to Gary Hunter, he said it's possibly just the sleeves coming up the old trail were possibly hidden in there. And he said we don't we don't have any documentation of it. But the way everything is laid out, we are very confident in believing in it possibly was. And one of my, our trustees said, uh, John, you got the perfect barn for a barn quilt with the history and everything and, and it's well preserved as it is. Since this was one of the main highways up for the Underground Railroad, why don't you go with the, with the Underground Railroad theme? Maybe you should come up with a theme that directed the slaves how to get to Lake Erie. And I said, well, what would that be? And he said, they were told to follow the drinking gourd. And that's when the light went off in my head.
especially in the summer summer months, we have people stopping and uh, they'll be out by the highway by the ditch taking pictures. And some people pull in and introduce themselves and ask if it's okay to take pictures of the barn quilt. And, and we respond to them very graciously because we appreciate the fact that people do enjoy what we, we have on that barn. And I've had people from Canada, California, and Hawaii stop and take pictures of that barn quilt. You, you can't, you cannot go around the United States and see barn after barn after barn. Farther you go west, uh, like these people from California said, there are no barns. Said, we have to come here to see them. And that's why they're, these folks from California were so interested in the barn quilt trail. They had their map and they said, we are going to visit everyone. And when I go in these old barns and look up there and, and realize these people put these all up by hand, it's mind boggling to uh, figure out how they did it. <laughs>